Spirit of the Holy Ghost moving on your hearts right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. If you could stand with me for a few moments, go right into the Word. Oh, God, I must see. Woo! Jesus. Glory to God. There's an anointing in this place. There's the anointing in this place. It's the power of the Lord moving in the atmosphere. Whatever you need God to do, believe it and do not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you pray for, it will surely come to pass, and God will do it. Isaiah chapter 42, begin at verse 5. Isaiah chapter 42, begin at verse 5. Hallelujah, Jesus. It says, thus says God the Lord, he that created and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, that he giveth breath Unto the people, you catch that? God give you breath. The people upon the earth. And the spirit to them that walk therein. Verse 6, and I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant to the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes and to bring out the prisoners from the prisons. Ooh, glory to God. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. That is powerful. Verse 8. I am the Lord. Who is it? Who is it? The Lord I am. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Verse 9, behold, the former things are come to pass, and the new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. You may be seated. You may be seated. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. For your presence in this place, oh God, anoint my heart to be the tablet engraved with your word to speak by the unction of the Holy Spirit. That you, God, would give us a rhema word that would carry us through the week, oh God. When we're faced with oppositions, trials, and tests, that your word will encourage us. Your word will stir us up to trust you. And keep us secure in your presence that we not lose our faith, but you stretch our faith and cause us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of who you are. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a prophetic word that God had given Isaiah the prophet to speak to the children of Israel during this time. They were in Babylonian captivity, and they were starting to lose their hope. And God had to send a prophetic word to encourage them. Sometimes when we're going through different situations in our life, we need a word. A friend might call you. Anthony might come and say, Pastor Emery, you know, God told me to call you. I have a word for you today. And it'd be just what I needed because God would touch her heart, his heart, her heart, his heart, he touched every individual in this place, and he'll give you a word for somebody, but a lot of times we hold on to the word because of fear. We're afraid to release it, to tell the individual who God impressed upon your heart to call them or go visit them and share with them the word of the Lord. And it'd be the word that would sustain them. Even a word that will carry them through their situation. So it says, thus saith the Lord. This God said, I'm the one speaking. He that created 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything that exists. So I'm the one who created the heavens and stretched them out and spread forth the earth. Everything in the earth, he said, I breathe. The word of God is God breathed an inspired word in our hearts that we can apply to our lives to live. Did y'all catch that? It's a word God breathed upon you that you can hold on to that word so you can live. And a lot of times the enemy will make you doubt the word of God because he feels you're inadequate. The enemy feels you're not qualified for the word of God. And the thing God showed me this week, the greatest attack he brings against you is right here in your mind. To cause you to doubt the word of God because he knows if I can discourage you, deter you, distract you, I can stop you in your faith from believing the word of God. And God says, I'm the one that breathes in you. And he says, and spirit to them that walk therein. So my spirit is upon you. You got to understand in the Old Testament, the spirit of God did not dwell inside of mankind. It dwelt among them. So every so often, the Spirit of God would come upon a person. They would prophesy because of the Holy Spirit. But now because of Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit and relationship dwelling inside of us so I can speak the word of God. So when I'm in a destitute place, a dark place, a hurtful place, a painful place, I can find a rainbow word from reading the Logos. This is the Logos. The Bible is a handwritten book. But it has power. But it's only activated by the Holy Spirit when you read the word with an anticipation for God to speak to you. Then he says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant to other people. God says, I'm going to, I called you in my righteousness. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to give you to the people. He said, for a light, check this out. This caught my attention here. This one little part. He said, a light of the Gentiles. You got to understand that the Gentiles were considered the outcasts. So they were not part of the Abrahamic covenant that God spoke to Abraham for the children of Israel, the Jews. And because God gave them a word, So he says, I'm going to cause you to be an example to illuminate with the word I'm giving you to the Gentiles so they will be able to benefit from the same word. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. Then he says, I am. I love that. I am. The one who spoke in the beginning. I am. The Lord. And that is my name. When God told Moses, I heard the cry of my children in Egypt He says, and I have to deliver, so I am sending thee. So I want you to go to Pharaoh, tell Pharaoh the I am that is my name has sent you to declare a word of liberty. We have to speak the word in our own families. I don't know why God keeps saying this to me about families, because somebody's family is under attack. I don't know what it is. But God says we got to speak the word to our families in order for them to have ears to hear what the spirit says to the church. You got the power of the word to speak, to change and save their life. Glory to God. Then he says, in my glory, the outward expression of who God is, I'm not giving to another. He said, neither my praise to those idols, graven images as idols. And a lot of us have idols in our life. You take a moment and sit down and think about it. You'll find out some of your life you love more than God become an idol to you. Can I bring it home? Social media. Facebook. Instagram. Twitter. We spend more time on social media than spending time in the presence of God studying his word and fasting and praying. Even though we're in a corporate fast, that many folks still ain't fasting. Because they feel, what's the use? What's that going to do for me? That ain't benefiting me. If I need to fast, well, I need to fast. God knows my heart. He knows what I'm going through. He knows how to deliver me. Why do I need to fast? 
Jesus told the disciples, there's no need to fasting while I carry with you. But there's coming a time where you're going to have to fast for yourself to you be increasing your faith. And we're living in a time we can attest by looking at the news every day. People are dropping dead all around us. Somebody being murdered. Somebody being ran over. Somebody being robbed, being beaten. All this stuff is happening. Why? Because God is trying to shake up the church to come back together in one accord in a corporate fast. Not just in redeemed faith, but all over the world. That the people of God will begin to remember the Lord that God and serve him with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But then he goes on, behold, let me pay attention. Let me captivate your attention. The former things are come to pass. What is it in your life that's former to you, you still holding on to? What is it that's from the past has crippled you for a season? What is it in your life got your mind stuck in an old relationship? What is it that got your life in a turmoil because you can't let go of the hurt people have done to you in the church? A lot of church hurt first. folks. They hurt other folk because I've been hurt. I'm going to hurt Sister Deanie. I'm going to hurt her because she hurt me. So everywhere I go, I'm breathing pain on somebody else because of my own personal affliction. So because I've been scarred, I've been broken, I've been torn down, I've been talked about, I've been ostracized, I've been beat on. I, I, I feel that nobody cares about me, so I don't want to care about Prophet April. So when I come around her, I'm just going to breathe my negativity on her, my toxicity that's toxic. So I'm going to tell, tell you something toxic about her so you can stop loving her. We do it all the time in the church. We talk about one another instead of doing the words that pray in all men of prayer in behalf of all saints in the spirit. So I don't pray for them in the spirit. I gossip about them. So I pray on them. Holy Ghost, you're speaking today. P-R-E-Y. I pray on Anyone in the church that I don't like because I don't like the way they look at me. I don't like the way you talk to me. I don't like the way you didn't speak to me when you walk through the doors. So I'm mad at you. I don't even want you to be around me. So when I see you coming, I'm going around Sister Sam because I don't want to talk to her. And God is saying the former things are come to pass. And the children is Israel, their problem was God was bringing a message of hope to their living them but they were stuck in the mentality of Egypt. And God is saying, and a new thing, a new thing, what is your expectation you're looking for God to do in your life? What is the new thing you need God to do for you in your children? What is the new thing you need God to do for you in your marriage? What is the new thing you need God to do for you in your community, in your church? What is the new thing you need God to do for you? God puts it this way. New thing do I that I am. Declare. You made a declaration to yourself that I declare I ain't going back to the old no good knucklehead man no more. I declare I ain't going back to the old jacked up woman that I used to be with. I declare I'm not going back to the old job no more. Even though God said go back anyway. I don't want to go there because they hurt me. They fired me. All the stuff. And God said go back. So we get in the place in our minds. We say nope. I ain't doing it. I don't care. That's what you say, God. I'm going to follow my own leadership. I feel my spirit leading me. You're right. Your spirit. Because your spirit is the way of a transgressor. When God speaks a word, he says the way of a transgressor. That means I go against what God told me to do. It's hard. But he says, but the path of the righteous, check this out. It's a smooth plane. So the crooked place in your life is I'm going to make it straight. And the rough place is going to make it smooth. 
But then he goes and says, I declare, he said, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So you can't tell me God don't speak to us. It says it right here in the book that I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's go to chapter 43. Then I'm going to go to Philippians. Chapter 43, 18 and 19. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ooh, bless your name, God. Here's another word God gave me in the last couple of weeks. I've been studying this script for many years. I've preached it many times. And God says, this is somebody in the house today. They need to hear this. Remember. Say the word remember with me. Remember. Remember ye, talking about you, not. So look at your neighbor and say, remember not. The former things. Because that's what he's talking about. Neither consider the things of old. Why? I, I, I pondered this for a while. I said, God, why do you say don't remember the former things of old? And he says, he says, don't, don't remember them. I said, why, God? You know why? We get paralyzed with the former things. You ever seen a person paralysis? They can't move. They might can move the waist down. They can't move waist down. But they can move the upper torso. Or they might be paralyzed from the neck all the way down. They can't move at all. But they still got to move their head. They still can speak. They still got eyes to see. Got ears to hear. The enemy does the same thing in the body of Christ. He'll cripple you. He'll pr paralyze you to prevent you from walking forward in the promise God has for you in your life. So when the enemy comes to do, he'll doubt God's word in your mind. He'll tell you God don't care about you. God don't love you. God don't, 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 don't matter in your life about anything you're doing. I can do whatever I want to do. God going to love me anyway. How many of you heard that before? I can do whatever I want to do. God going to still forgive me. How many of you heard that before? I can do whatever I want to do and God going to forgive me. Ain't too many with you. All right. I'm good. Good. Y'all agree with that. Because one thing about it, godly sorrow draws men to repentance. So God cares about a repentful heart. If I repent for my wrongdoings and I meant it, he cares about you. Glory to God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then he goes and says, behold, I will do a new thing. The same thing you just said in 42. Behold, pay attention, be on guard, be alert. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. He said, first he said, I will tell you before it spring forth about what I'm about to do in your life. But now he says in 43, now it shall. It's a difference. He declared it before, I'm going to do something. But after the declaration, he tells you now it shall spring forth. That thing you've been praying for, that house you've been looking for, the new job you need, the increase in your finances, healing for your husband or your wife, healing in your body, healing for your children, bring that wayward child back home, bring that child who went caught up in the gangs and drug activity. He says, now it shall spring forth. You know what, it, what God's saying? Persistence. You have to have persistence. No matter how challenging it becomes in your life, you still need to have persistence. Don't quit. Keep believing God, even though it don't look like God going to answer. Dark clouds coming like pig pen and Charlie Brown. And when we had a dark cloud follow him, God said, even though a dark cloud follow you everywhere you go, you still keep on having persistence. He said, shall ye not know it? It's a question. He said, now it shall spring forth. Then he asked a question. Shall you not know it? Are you going to be aware of what I'm doing in your life? Are you going to pay attention to what I'm doing in your life? Are you going to really listen to me? Or are you going to continue to be a backslider? Keep on transgressing my law. Then he goes on and says, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the deserts. So God says that dry season, you know, wilderness is dry. It's a desert. It's like a desert. He says in that wilderness, like the wooded areas in the wilderness, like going into the to the uh, forest somewhere. 
But the desert is de it's sand, where the sand, the hills, and all that stuff, it's just dry, no water. God says, I will make a way when you get lost in the woods. We get caught lost in the woods of life. We get discarded by all the stuff that look like trees in the world of sin. The trees of sin. God says, we get, get lost in that stuff. But he says, because you love me and I love you, I will even make a way in the wilderness. And rivers, he didn't say a river. You got to pay attention. The plural word, more than one, rivers. So what he's talking about is when I begin to manifest my deliverance in your life, like a rivers, like the rivers, he said, the river going to flow through you. It's going to flow to your children. It's going to flow from the children to the mother. Flow from the mother to the grandma. It's going to flow to her children because they're going to keep on flowing. And that's the anointing. God says the anointing is rivers that I'm going to pour into your life when I do the new thing, declares the Lord. Woo! Glory to God. Preach myself happy on that one. So in other words, my children shall be blessed. My descendants shall be blessed. My bloodline shall be blessed. My grandchildren, great-grandchildren shall be blessed. Why? Because the rivers of the anointing is flowing in our lives. And God said, everybody in the house of the Lord today connected to the shepherd in this place, the rivers is flowing in your life. Glory to God. Woo, Jesus. Thank you, Father. So God says, when you have an expectancy and you begin to look to the hills which comes your help, doesn't matter what you're going through in this life. Doesn't matter about the burdens on your shoulders and the yokes on your neck. God says, I will declare my word over you and deliver you and set you free. Go to Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. Oh my God. Father, you're good. We'll go to 13, Philippians 3, 13. He said, brethren, that means brother and sister, not just gender. He says, I count not myself to have apprehended. I don't know everything. I haven't figured it all out. I can't fix my problems. I can't change my situation. But this one thing that I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and are reaching forth unto the things which are before. So you get a revelation of Jesus going to the cross. You understand what Paul was talking about. I've been beaten. I've been left for dead. I've been shipwrecked. I've been bitten by vipers. And every time the devil tries to knock me out for the count, something on the inside kept stirring me up to keep on moving forward. I don't know everything, but one thing that I do, I forget all the problems that hurt me. I forget about all the people that scandalize my name. I forget about all my haters and persecutors. I keep holding on to the word of God because I know I'm reaching forward for those things which are before. But one thing I do in the midst, I press my way forward. I press toward the mark of the pride, the high call of God in Christ Jesus. I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand for that prize of the high calling in Christ. We have a calling on our lives. We got a high praise connected to the high calling on your life. When you know that you know that you know uh, that God brought you out of a situation you couldn't figure out for yourself. You might have been in prison one day and you thought you'd never get out. And all of a sudden, God touched the juror and he touched the judge's heart to plead your case with the prosecutor to let you go free. I come to tell you today that my God is a deliverer as I keep reaching forward to the expecting hope that's in Christ Jesus. I'm not looking back no more. I'm not going back to the old ways of filth and sin. 
I'm moving forward in sanctification. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've been sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And therefore, I'm reaching for the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Because he's good. He heard my despairing cry. One day I was sinking far from the peaceful shore. Sinking to rise no more. But all of a sudden, there was a lifeline that threw out in my direction. It was a lifeline at my disposal where I could reach forward to the calling of God. I could reach and find my deliverance. I could reach and find my healing. I could reach and find my breakthrough because of the love of God for me. I don't know about you. Sometimes I get in a dark place and, and I begin to cry all night long. But I heard the Lord he told me, hold on, my child. Everything is going to be all right. I'll dry the tears from your weeping eye. I'll call the pain in your body that's plaguing you to give you peace. Because I am the God of peace. All it takes is one word and a determined heart with persistence. To keep reaching forward, keep on reaching forward. Like the woman in issue of blood, she reached forward, took the hem of his garment. Like the disciples on the ship that reached forward to Jesus to deliver them when the ship was going through a storm. I come to tell you today, uh, your storms may be raging. They may be critical. They may feel like you're about to be destroyed, about to lose your mind. Oh, hell breaking loose in your life. You feel, where is God when I need him? And God seemed to be quiet like he not listened to me. There's many times I prayed. Seemed like God wasn't going to answer me. But I come to tell you sometimes when God is quiet, he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to get realigned with the spirit. Then you can tap into the kingdom. Begin to declare the word of God over yourself. And God will answer you. He will deliver you. He will set you free. Because it's I love you with an everlasting love. That's eternal. How many of you experience eternal love today? You ever experience eternal love? Where God just loves you so much, even in your mess. He keeps loving you even any way you forsake him. When you turn your back and he still loves you. And he's right there. He's right there just like that. On that cross. It says, if any man desires, you have a passion. You have a desire to come after me. He said, let you first deny yourself. Take up your cross. It costs to follow Jesus. You lose your job. You lose your money. You lose your marriage. You lose your car. You lose everything because he loves you. And the enemy knows that God loves you, so he got to attack you to deter your faith from trusting in God. So when cancer hit my body, I said, Lord, you told me in your word I will not die but live and declare the works of God. You're looking at a miracle. I stood on this word. Prophet Charlene's a miracle. Sister T, a miracle. Willie is a miracle. Man, I'll be done in the physical, but God says in the spirit, it's already done. Because we believe and we come together and believe for our brother's condition. God says, I would do it. Because if my people shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear for heaven to give the sins. 
heal his land. His body is his land. It needs healing. Because if we come together in one accord, he going to heal his land. That's the promise we have with our God. Somebody need, need that word today. We want to keep lifting up Pastor Auntie Christine. We had a chance to go visit her a couple of days ago. And that woman is a mighty woman of God. Mighty woman of God. Strong in faith. Dr. Gabriel, over a year ago, she wasn't going to last. But three months, she outlasted what the doctor said because of her faith in God. I know what my God can do. I know he can do it for anybody else. She told us what made us all laugh. She said, you know, I've been trying to lose all this weight I had on me for years. But guess what? It's all gone now. She was in good spirit laughing and joking. And I told her, I said, woman of God, she made this one statement. So I don't know if God going to let me in because I cussed. And me and Pastor looked at each other and we said, God knows your heart. He already got you as his child. Your cussing ain't going to stop him from loving you and walk me in the kingdom because he's still a deliverer. And she said, I made myself right before God before I die. And that's a word we all need to get right before your time comes. And then she told her children, my desire is all of you get back in church. She told her children that. And that's what should be our desire, to get our children in church. This church should be full of teenagers and young people. But many of them have drifted away. But I come to tell you, if he did it before, he'll do it again. Amen, amen. Brother William, I'll close off for the Facebook. You go ahead and turn it off in just a minute. So those of you who are watching via Facebook today, I pray that God speak to your heart today. You might be in a dark place, stuck in the past, and can't seem to progress in the future what God has for you.